Okay, today I'm going to show how to make a potato shape or egg shape that's paper mache that has weights in it so it's balanced. <clears throat> it kind of makes an interesting toy. It's made with floral foam and paper mache. When you toss them, they stand upright when they land. Now, I didn't, most of the time, they stand up upright. Both of these are student examples. Um, okay, so for the first part of this, I'm going to make the basic shape by cutting it out of the rock of this floral foam. Floral foam is, uh, I got it at a hobby store, but it works nice because it's easy to shape. The first thing I do is block it out so that it's a basic shape. Now the two best tools for shaping this are your hands or and also a toothbrush. So I cut the corners off with the toothbrush. Sand them off to get kind of a shape started. Now the next thing you do after you get a basic shape, you can just use the palm of your hand to shape the bottom into kind of a bowl shape. You can rub the corners off. Now I've got the basic shape. Now I don't do, you don't have to do this next part, but I do it to ensure that the thing is light on the top. You just take some sort of a tool and hollow out a little more foam. Take a little more weight out of the top part. You don't want to go too far down because you don't want to cut into the place where the weights are going to be. So there, that's a little wider. So now we have a hollow shape. I use two different kinds of ways to weight it. You could put one, this one would probably stand with one solid one, one bigger one. But I'm going to do it with an arrangement of three. If you put one in, you'd put it right in the center. With three, you kind of space them. So that one's going to lean slightly while it's standing up. All right. So the next thing you do is you use glue. And I usually put a paper down under this so that it doesn't stick. Use paper and glue. And I'm using these brown paper towels. You could paint these things, but I like the brown paper towels because it makes it look like a potato. But you can also put paint on. Now, the trick to getting the thing started is 
the glue, even with the glue, this doesn't like to stick to the foam very well. So the first thing you need to do is get a strip of paper with glue on it all the way around the shape so that the paper has something to stick to. And then as you start getting glue on the surface, it's easier to put more papers on. Once you got a lot of glue on your hands, sometimes you don't even have to dip the paper. You shouldn't use big sheets of paper. You should never take a whole sheet like this and put it on. I have trouble getting students to understand that. That just makes big wrinkles, smaller pieces. A lot of times on some things, some shapes you're better off, and on this one, maybe towards the end, you're better off putting postage stamp size. That way you don't get wrinkles. Now I'm getting a lot of glue on there, so I'm not going to have to dip it so much. You want to get enough paper on that you absolutely cannot see any of the green foam. But beyond that, you want to have enough paper that you can't see through the paper and see the green underneath, which would indicate that you have multiple, maybe at least three layers over the whole surface. Paper mache, you can put lots of layers on. It gets harder the more layers you put on it, more durable. And this is a particular thing that I've noticed the weights shake loose after a while if you throw these a bunch of times. This is an, actually an old toy that's been around for a long time. People made them probably out of wood and then plastic. There's some commercial toys. This is just a fun way to make a toy out of materials to make your own toy. You could make Easter eggs. You could make them as Easter eggs and paint them as Easter eggs. You could make them as a potato shape with these brown paper towels. Oh, that's the other thing about paper mache. If you use newspaper, that's a little slicker kind of paper. But softer paper like paper towels will soak up the glue and it's easier to smooth paper towels because they're so soft. You can get rid of the wrinkles easier. I'm just putting on enough paper to make sure the thing is covered. And smooth. This one's probably a little smoother than either of those because students made those, which are pretty good ones. But sometimes students don't get all the wrinkles out and it'll leave some bumps on the surface. All of these sort of things take a little practice so if students make several of them, I've made a bunch of them now, they get better each time. I had to make probably 12 of them before I really got a really good one. I had to make six before I got one that stood up every single time. This one won't stand up until it's dry because when the paper is wet it throws off the balance. But when it's dry, it'll stand up every time just like that one or that one, which does it almost every time. It must have like a flat spot on one side. 
All right, that's it.